History is full of amazing stories and memorable people. But we don't care about them. No hits, deep tracks only. Some of the most influential people in the world have been completely overlooked or just plain forgotten. We are digging deep into the history books to bring you their stories. And maybe some laughs along the way. This is History's B-Side. Hey everyone, Phil and I wanted to take a second to thank you all for your continuous support and interest in History's B-Side. Uh, we both really look forward to sharing these great stories with you every week, and uh, it's been really great to hear back from some of you on your thoughts and, and see how excited you guys are about our episodes each week. Yeah, so we just wanted to kind of give you guys a little sample of another project that we've been working in addition to History's B-Side. I mean, it's more of History's B-Side, basically, but yeah. it's our... Our monthly bonus episode, which we titled History's B-Side Battles. And you can find the full episode on our Buy Me A Coffee page. It's buymeacoffee.com slash history's B-Side. But we put one of these episodes out once a month on the first of the month just to kind of revisit some of our previous topics that you've heard a lot about. And we want to give you guys a little sample of what those episodes sound like. So... The basic structure is that we take our monthly topics, so the topics that would have been released in a certain month, uh, and we plug them into a randomizer grid, and then we have them face each other battle royale style. And we basically discuss, debate, and sometimes argue quite aggressively about who would win. <laughs> Um, and we make the game a little bit more interesting by adding a twist with uh, one of our favorite games, Super Fight. And the way Super Fight works is it's essentially a series of cards displaying attributes that your person or character would have uh, in the fight. And they range from, you know, silly things like oversized clothes and having a super glue water gun to, you know, being the size of the earth or shooting fire so the arguments get pretty interesting when we start mixing in all of our historical characters so on this episode you're going to hear a couple people that we talked about in our june episodes so you you get a little sample of some of the people that we talked about already in a way that you've never heard of them before because we kind of make it up as we go and it's a little wild a little off the walls a little more casual sometimes we have our dogs in the room with us but it'll be just kind of a fun twist on the stories that you've already heard We'll give you a little sample to start here, and if you like what you hear, you can get the full episode on our Buy Me A Coffee page, which again is buymeacoffee.com slash histories b-side. Thanks, and hope you enjoy. All right, so right hand, left hand, which one you want? Right hand this time. That's this one. Uh... Yeah. Abd al-Rahman has an invisibility cloak. Oh, good. Why you sound despondent? That'll help it's probably him run. a good thing. Probably. Susanna Salter is on a pogo stick. <laughs> this is fantastic. I'm regretting giving you the last round. Because why? Because now you're gonna have to argue with Laura Bossi. <laughs> oh, why are you just you know assuming that you're gonna win this round and also assuming that you're gonna take the man in the next round? That's sexist, Matt. Well, I know I'm gonna do that because I I already decided I'm gonna take him. <laughs> he might not make it out of the first round. Susanna Salter, first of all, girl power. She's an awesome woman who broke barriers and broke the glass ceiling, which could be referred to as an invisible barrier, such as an invisibility cloak. And she broke the glass ceiling by hopping on her pogo stick and launching herself all the way up through it in the same way that she this sounds like a get on argument. her pogo stick and bounce all around until she eventually finds this guy who's just cowering in fear behind his invisibility cloak because he's afraid of a woman and can't get out on his own and try to challenge her without oh, hiding oh, behind oh, his oh, invisibility cloak all, and she's going to get all, to him and she's going to take him out the same way she did the, the other guys in the mayoral race first of all 
you're assuming that this invisible barrier and invisibility cloak are are the same thing and i don't i think that's a improper metaphor. it was a metaphor second, matt i understand it's a metaphor i just said it was a metaphor i said it was an improper metaphor second of all <laughs> I do not believe that Abdal Rahman would have been cowering in fear. Then what's he need the invisibility cloak from for? a woman? Extra to safety. Hide. All I'm saying is he was able to, to successfully evade murderous Abbasids. I think he can handle Susanna Salter from the United States. That's because the murderous Abbasids were dumb and they were like, Oh, you're hiding. Come out. We won't hurt you. And then he sent his brother to get murdered by them because he's a terrible person and a coward. Whereas Susanna he didn't Salter send is his smart brother to get you're, you're misrepresenting his life. Susanna you're Salter is his smart, life. and she will, you know, make make good relations with him the way that she did with the male town counselors and get him on her good side. And then she will turn on him and destroy him once he gains once she gains his trust. I don't think he would go for that, though. He would be fooled by her. He clearly saw the plans of the other guys coming. I don't think he'd be fooled by That's her. That's because they were men. He has never really encountered a strong woman like Susanna Salter. He's from the, what, 7th century or something like that? Mm-hmm. He has no idea what he's up against. He still he thinks might. of women as property, and Susanna Salter won't stand for that. I doubt he'd stand for property talking back. <laughs> Now who's which the sexist, an, Matt? <laughs> which is an argument I'm sticking with. <laughs> now who's the sexist, Matt? I'm standing in the shithole I've dug for myself. <laughs> you have to let me win now. Otherwise I'm you proud just look like it. a pig. <laughs> I maintain... He's the Falcon of Courage. Susanna Salter would be returned to her family as a head, wrapped in salt... With a tag How's he going to reach her head when she's jumping up and down on a pogo stick? She's going to be way above him. It's a pogo stick, not a rocket. Still get up in the air. What What do you do on a pogo stick? Get real high. You get like two feet off the ground at best. We need to now Google how tall was Susanna Salter. I don't think we do. She was probably pretty short. Wow, sexist. And I also feel like Abdel Rahman has the support of armies behind him. You know, he no, raised a hundred thousand person army. He ran away on his own like a little coward. But eventually was able to raise an army capable of holding Spain and Portugal. She may have only been five foot three. All right. <laughs> Let's not forget that Susanna Salter had nine children, including one while she was the mayor. She is a tough well, chick. Good. There's lots of people. And she's to receive raising her, her head. own little army, and they're all gonna take out Abd Al Rahman and his sixteen other names. No, they're gonna get beheaded and have their heads nailed to a bridge in the city. Wow! Now you're murdering children. Um, I hope. I hope I'm you know doubling this, down. This bonus episode is going to make you the least popular person on history's B-side podcast. I can live with that. <laughs> I can live with that. <laughs> Still top two though. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. Now that you've gotten a taste of some of the interesting and zany fun that we get to have on these bonus episodes. Um, we just want to remind you that they are available, the full episode. Uh, you can hear more at buymeacoffee.com slash histories B-side, um, where you can sign up for some of our memberships and hear the episodes every month. Yeah, we just came out with some new membership levels. They started just $5 a month, which gets you access to the monthly bonus episodes. But if you want some extra perks, like some of our bookmarks, postcards, some of our little giveaway items. You can get that at some of the higher membership tiers. It includes things like sneak peeks at some of our future episodes and maybe some other ways that you can interact with us as well. Also on our Buy Me A Coffee page are some extras available for purchase, including stickers, bookmarks, and postcards. And you can even have us include a message on our show. Or you can simply donate to the show by clicking Buy Them A Coffee. It really helps us keep the show going, all the time that we put in with just the two of us researching 
editing, recording, producing these episodes for you. And we love doing it, but it definitely helps to let us know that you enjoy the show and that you want to be a part of History's B-Side as well. So thank you so much for listening. Again, that website is buymeacoffee.com slash History's B-Side. We hope you enjoyed this little clip of our bonus episode, and there's a whole lot more of it on our Buy Me A Coffee page. As always, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. History's B-Side is an independent, listener-supported podcast. Leave us a review or subscribe to the show on your favorite podcasting service. And follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at History's B-Side. Send us your feedback or inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities by emailing us at historiesbside at gmail.com. You can donate to the show at buymeacoffee.com slash historiesbside. While you're there, check out our membership perks, merchandise, and more. This episode was researched and produced by your hosts, Matt Melito and Phil Hall. Thanks for listening to History's B-Side.